Google facing out China. Now its translation service is exiting the world's biggest internet market. A major U.S. pharma company also reportedly losing access to the Chinese market after turning down a request from Beijing. No imminent invasion in Taiwan. That's the word from Biden's defense secretary. At the same time, reiterating America's commitment to the island. China is selling liquefied natural gas from the U.S. to Europe. We take a closer look at why there's so much excess and a deadly drug threatening kids in America. With Halloween around the corner, 15,000 fentanyl pills, concealed as nerds and skittles, have been seized on U.S. soil. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Google is phasing out China. Now, one of the world's most popular translation services is exiting the Chinese market. Google says it's because of low usage. But is there more to the story? NTD's Phil Zhou reports. Who knew Google still had services running in China during a time when companies are getting banned or censored if they don't fall in line with the Chinese Communist Party? When an American business transact business with China, they're the boss, not the company. But Google still offers services such as the Chrome browser and Google Translate in China. However, not for long. Google confirmed that its Google Translation services are no longer available in the communist country. The tech giant says it's because of low usage. Chuck Flint, a former U.S. Senate chief of staff, says that's just an excuse. It's another example of the party tightening its reins ahead of of the party Congress. Xi Jinping is on track to be elected to a third five-year term, which would be absolutely unprecedented. And he's going to make sure that nothing gets in his way. The upcoming CCP Congress is pretty much the meeting where all the Chinese leaders come together and decide the country's leadership and future. They want to avoid any type of criticism or dissent of the party. And you've seen more of it recently because you've had COVID lockdowns. You've had bank closures and the freezing of accounts. You've got a housing market that's in absolute freefall. Tech entrepreneur Bob Bilbrook says he doesn't think Google was going anywhere in China anyways. It was kind of an easy thing to give up. Um, when your product isn't doing well and um, Badu kind of dominates the search space in China, then you're not, you know, number one or number two in the market. Google's search engine was pulled from China back in 2010. Later on, China even banned Google's Gmail and Google Maps. But the tech giant hasn't completely left China yet. Its desktop web browser Google Chrome and a few other services are still available for now. Phil Zhou, NTD News. A major Western drug maker losing its access to the Chinese market. That's after Beijing asked the company to hand over its vaccine technology, and it refused. Moderna has reportedly turned down a request from China to hand over its COVID-19 vaccine technology in exchange for market access. That's according to a report from News Natlib Financial Times, citing anonymous sources. China hasn't approved any foreign COVID-19 vaccines. Instead, its 1.4 billion population relies on several domestically developed shots. Sources told the Financial Times that despite turning down Beijing's request, Moderna is still eager to sell into China. NTD reached out to Moderna for comment but did not immediately receive a reply. Asking foreign companies to hand over technology for market access is a common practice for Beijing. In the early 2000s, Beijing tapped Western firms for high-speed rail technology. They had to transfer their technology to Chinese firms in order to enter the market. Still, manufacturing industry giants like Siemens and Alstom all joined in. Eventually, the regime acquired their key technology. And much to the company's surprise, the regime started applying for high-speed rail patents abroad within just a few years. That precedent is sparking concerns that similar technology transfers could pop up in other sectors. New action from the U.S. and Japan to deter supply chain threats from China. U.S. semiconductor giant Micron is getting over $300 million in subsidies, all from the Japanese government. The microchip maker said it would use the money to boost chip production at its Hiroshima plant. 
The news comes after Vice President Kamala Harris's meeting with Japanese technology leaders about semiconductors. But the effort has been underway for a while. For months, the U.S. and Japan have been in discussion about expanding cooperation in chip making so that they can cut reliance on Taiwan for the most advanced microchips. Semiconductors or microchips run our modern life. They are the brains of all modern electronics, from cars and iPhones to missiles and fighter jets. But here's the catch. 90% of the world's most advanced semiconductors are made in Taiwan. Without these tiny chips, our computers, iPhones and fighter jets would not be possible. And the U.S. relies on a single Taiwanese company to make the most cutting-edge chips, TSMC. But this critical source of supply is under the shadow of the Chinese Communist Party. Beijing sees Taiwan as part of its territory and has been vowing to take it under control by force if necessary. At a meeting with Japanese business leaders, Harris emphasized the importance of diversifying supply chains. We have to diversify our reliance on essential supplies, Japan, the United States and the world. We also understand on this issue that no one country can satisfy the globe's demand. Japan also has been wooing other U.S. chipmakers. This July, it announced a grant of over $600 million for U.S. chip giant Western Digital. That's to expand chip production in Japan. Now, let's shift to Taiwan. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says that he doesn't see an imminent invasion in the cars for the island. In a CNN interview aired Sunday, Austin said China used House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's Taiwan visit as a chance to create a new normal. Pelosi's August visit to the island enraged China. In response, Beijing launched military drills near Taiwan. Those have continued until recently. Austin added that what the U.S. does see is China moving to establish what we would call a new normal. He also pointed out increased Chinese activity and said the U.S. saw a number of centerline crossings of the Taiwan Strait by their aircraft. That number has increased over time. He said the U.S. will continue to work with its allies to maintain a free and open Indo-Pacific. Last month, President Joe Biden said the U.S. would defend Taiwan in the event of an invasion, specifically that U.S. men and women would be involved in the effort. But when Austin was asked if the U.S. was prepared to defend Taiwan militarily, he didn't directly answer. He said the military is prepared to protect our interests and live up to our commitments. He also said the United States is working to reopen channels of military communication with China and that he has spoken to his Chinese counterpart, Defense Minister Wei Fenghe. The Chinese Communist regime considers Taiwan a part of its territory, despite never having ruled it. Beijing has vowed to so-called reunify the island with the Chinese mainland, by force if necessary. Taiwan's navy took a special delivery on Friday of a new domestically made amphibious warfare ship. The over 11,000-ton ship can be used to land troops and bolster supply lines to vulnerable islands. It's the first warship of its kind that Taiwan has built at home. The vessel is part of Taiwan's efforts to modernize its military amid growing threats from Beijing. As the demand for energy dies down at home, Chinese companies are left with some extra liquefied natural gas bought from the U.S. And they're making a profit selling that access to Europe and Asia. That's according to a report from the Wall Street Journal. China struck a long-term liquefied natural gas deal with the U.S. under the Trump administration. The agreement aimed to make China import more from the U.S. As of this year, China has over 70 million tons of contracted gas from the U.S. deal. But it's predicted to only need about 90 percent. So the nation will have several million tons of extra gas. For the first eight months this year, Chinese exports of the fuel to Europe soared. It sold over $400 million worth of liquefied natural gas to Europe and Asia. That's compared to over $7 million worth last year. It's difficult to estimate how much profit Chinese companies are making off the excess gas. But each cargo shipment could bring them hundreds of millions of dollars. 
With the flow of Russian gas to Europe dwindling, the shift is helping China. Now it seems Chinese manufacturers are keeping Europeans warm this winter amid the energy crisis. Electric blankets, electric kettles, sleeping bags and hot water bottles, all made in China, are flying off the shelves. Let's zoom in. According to Chinese reports, this created a boom for Chinese factories. Some electric blanket factories are producing at full capacity to keep up with demand. One factory in China's Dongguan City is operating 24 hours a day. Dongguan City is a major Chinese manufacturing hub and is considered the world's factory. The factory manager said sales of electric blankets this year have tripled that of the same period last year. He's seeing the highest sale numbers in half a decade. The factory has to run three consecutive shifts to keep production going around the clock. Electric blanket exports to Europe hit over $30 million from January through July. This is almost double compared to all of last year. And in Europe, a simple rubber hot water bottle is around 10 euros or $10, while the same product is around 70 cents in China. It seems like people in Europe are buying up so much winter essentials from China that it has gone viral on Chinese social media. The hashtag Europeans buying frenzy of Chinese electric blankets has gotten over 200 million views. One Chinese social media user joked, I think we can safely say that the world can go without Russia, but we'll always need China. Even though some Chinese businesses are making a profit from Europe's energy crisis, electric blanket shipments won't be enough to boost China's export numbers at large. Household appliances can only offset a small percent of slowing demand. China's year-over-year export growth fell significantly in August compared to the previous month. Meanwhile, the World Bank cut forecasts for China's economic growth down to a 3.2 percent from 5 percent. China's COVID-19-driven lockdowns are among the biggest reasons behind that drop. One of China's largest car makers has purchased a nearly 8% stake in ultra-luxury car maker Aston Martin. The British car is known for being James Bond's go-to ride. Zhejiang Geely Holding Group, known as Geely, released news of the stake Friday, but did not disclose its value. Based on Aston Martin's closing share price on Wednesday, the stake has an estimated value of around $8.4 billion. Geely is also the owner of Swedish car manufacturer Volvo. Over 100,000 drug overdose deaths in the U.S. last year. That means 12 people are killed by the illegal substances every hour. With Halloween coming up, the Drug Enforcement Administration is sending out a warning that there is fentanyl-laced candy flooding the market. We sat down with former DEA Special Agent in Charge Derek Maltz to find out more about this deadly phenomena and what's behind it. So I want to begin with this uh, report out last year that over 100,000 people died from overdose deaths and 70% of that was related to fentanyl-laced pills. And the DEA recently came out with a report warning about now rainbow-colored fentanyl. So what is the point of this rainbow fentanyl? Who are the targets? We don't call them overdoses now. We call them poisonings. And there's mass poisonings all over the country. And unfortunately, a lot of young Americans are dying as young as 12 or 13 years old, because they're able to buy this stuff now online. The pills are very popular because in America, you know, pills are, you know, thought about as like a drug from the doctor. That's a very important drug. If you have anxiety, you take Xanax. If you have attention deficit disorder, you take Adderall. If you have pain, you take some Oxy or Percocet. But if it's prescribed by the doctor, that's cool. If you're getting it from Walgreens and CVS, that's good. But if you're buying it online, most likely it's fentanyl and it will kill you. 40% of the pills that have been analyzed by the DEA lab has revealed a potentially lethal dose of fentanyl. But now what's happening is the Mexican cartels have implemented a strategic and deceptive marketing campaign looking to drive addiction and drive profits. And they're going after the kids because the kids are obsessed with their smartphones and they're operating on the social media apps all day. And now it's become very easy to buy these pills online and you get them delivered right to your house. And there's many cases around America where kids are found in the bedrooms, blue in the face, dead, because they've ordered uh, a fake pill, not a counterfeit pill, a fake pill, because there's nothing real about it. 
And on the note of these younger targets with these rainbow-colored pills, Halloween is coming up. So what would be some ways children and parents, concerned parents, could protect their kids, especially with all the free candies being handed out? On the Halloween story, we just had a seizure up in Hartford, Connecticut. It was the DEA task force. They seized 15,000 pills, fake pills of fentanyl, but they were actually in boxes of nerds and Skittles which are two of the most most popular drugs, I'm sorry, two of the most popular candies around Halloween. So they're, disgu- they're putting it in the packaging. Doesn't mean they're going to sell it to kids, but they're, they're trying to move their drugs without getting caught. But unfortunately, those packages could be left around in a house and some kid innocently picks it up and starts trying to eat the candy and it's deadly fentanyl. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what's coming up in our second half. The fentanyl crisis in the U.S. and its ties to China. Not only are most of the drug's precursors flowing from the country, but Chinese criminals have also been linked to the operation. In the second part of our interview, Derek Maltz exposes how Chinese criminals are laundering millions of dollars through land and house purchases, and how some Chinese students are getting recruited to help. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Apoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow. Shen Yun Creations, the streaming platform from Shen Yun, featuring world-class dance, past programs, and all original music. Masterclasses, behind the scenes, comedy, and more. Explore ShenYunCreations.com.